All right, so this is actually a very quick demo of how to use a digital audio workstation with your Raspberry Pi Pico. So this is the final result. I can control instruments, the sound, like it was a MIDI device using my own device. So to see what I have over here, I just have my, my Raspberry Pi Pico here connected to the Blink Pico. These are just button. And these two cables here actually goes to the USB providing uh, serial communication, so WART. The way it works is by using a cable like this one, basically do from WART to USB. So this is the hardware setup. And now I'm going to show the software setup. Actually, before we get started, let me show you the overall architecture of what we are trying to accomplish. So we have a Raspberry Pi Pico, which is connected to a computer using a USB cable. And then it speaks to a server also running on a computer. And that server is written in JavaScript for Node.js. So this communication happens over this cable. This cable is a TTL to USB cable. So basically you connect this USB cable to your computer, but on the other side, there are some pins that you can connect to the WART port on your Raspberry Pi Pico. So specifically, the TX pin of my Pico will speak through this USB cable to the server. And the server will take that message, which is a comma separated value message, simply a string with the information about the instrument to play and the note, take that message and convert it to a MIDI message and send it to Logic Pro, the digital audio workstation. And Logic Pro, Logic Pro will play the sound. Um, just to give you a little more context in terms of hardware, this is my hardware, how it's connected. So this is the Blink Pico. You can ignore this part. This is just for buttons. You can do whatever you want. I use my, my Blink Pico simply for convenience to have three buttons. But basically, it's a USB cable connected to the computer. And then we have the TX pin. In this case, it's the white cable, which is the RX pin over here, right? Connected to the cable that goes to the computer. And then we have ground. I do not connect the RX pin and I do not connect the VCC pin. Those, I don't need them. And that's all. That's my hardware setup. There are several things that you will have to install and purchase for the project to work. Let's start from the hardware. You need to get a cable like this one. This is a USB to TTL cable. So um, in this particular case, it's from DeviceMart. Um, you can find under USB and TTL different version of this cable, including cheaper one, just simple adapters, for example. Uh, but I'm using this one here which substantially take your USB and then translate that in serial communication, in WART communication. And it's broken down in four pin. So you're gonna have your VCC pin, five volt or three volt. You're gonna have your black pin for ground, then green and white are typically TX and RX. Okay, so that's for the hardware. Then you're gonna install some software. This tutorial specifically is for Mac. So will not work for PC as is. Of course, you can adapt it and I'm gonna show you some software that is Mac only specific. Uh, the first software you wanna install is Node.js, which is actually cross-platform, and that enables you to use JavaScript on the server side. You can simply go to nodejs.org and download the latest version, 19.1.0, for, um, for the server. So download it, install it, following the walkthrough. Then you wanna install your digital audio workstation, Logic Pro. Uh, there is another workstation which is very famous called GarageBand, but that won't allow you to play multiple instruments at the same time. So we're going to use instead Logic Pro, which is, uh, however, not free. Okay, so it's not free, but they have a free trial that you can have for 90 days. So I downloaded the free trial and I installed that. Then you need some editor. Specifically, you need the editor to modify any of the server side code. I use Visual Studio Code. For Python, you can simply use Tony. And then finally, you need to install the project template files and the server that you can find at this repository. The link is in the description. 
and uh, the page you will find it's slightly different than what it looks right now because this is still a work in progress but substantially the code will be over here and then you're ready to go so the first thing we want to be doing is uh, launching logic pro so once that i have uh, uh, everything installed i can just simply click on logic pro and launch a project and when i launch a project it will look like this so i can choose an empty project and then it will ask me what i want to have to start i will have a software instrument now it made for me a very large window so i'm going to scale it down so that it can fit on the screen it's something that look like this and this is by no means a logic pro tutorial uh, but i just want to guide you to what we are going to need we are going to need some tracks to play a musical instrument so in this case i have a classic electric piano so there's a keyboard over here and if i press on this you should be able to hear a sound the sound of the keyboard i can also change my instrument by going here and for example let's say i don't want to have my classic piano over here but maybe i want to have i don't know let's try to find something else like a piano and then i want to have maybe over here something like maybe something like this okay so i can choose a different type of instrument or let's say i want to get a guitar right okay so that's how you can select your instrument on the current track here by clicking plus i can make another software instrument now i made a piano over here and if i click over here i have my guitar we are going to come back to this in a moment but we have to set up the midi first so i'm going to close this and now we have to set up the midi to set up the midi i have to go inside of my applications and then in the utility folder so inside of your application folder you're going to find utilities and then inside of the utilities you're going to find audio midi setup if i click on this it open up for me the audio midi setup so this audio midi setup here it's where we basically bridge the digital audio workstation with the server so you can see that we are in the default configuration i recommend we create a new configuration and we don't play with the default one so i create a new one and uh, once i am actually i did a mistake so this one i'm going to delete it by using a backspace to create a default configuration click on here and do a new configuration okay so i click on a new configuration i'm going to call it midi pico okay and once i have this almost nothing seems to have changed okay but i just want to make sure that i'm in the midi pico now i see this uh, IAC driver I double click on it and will open up this window for me I leave the name like this way but what I want to make sure is to click this device is online um, and that's it now I can see the time online I can see my port and I can see my bus one with my MIDI in and MIDI out and I'm good to go so at this point I'm going to simply click apply and I am pretty much done okay so I can close this window now I go back to my digital audio workstation and what I want to ensure is that I'm going to have um, you can see here for each one of the channel you have MIDI in port and then you have the channel in and the channel out so what I want to do is for example that my guitar becomes channel 1 and then my piano becomes my input channel 2 okay I don't care about the output channel I only care about the input channel so what I'm doing right now is this from my MIDI controller, which is my Raspberry Pi Pico, I will choose the channel I want to play. Therefore, I can choose which instrument I want to play. Okay, so this one will be channel one and this one will be on channel two. Okay, so now everything is set up and I'm almost ready to go. The only thing you want to make sure is to click this R. This R means I enable that for recording. So both of them are selected, you can see, so that incoming packages are going to trigger the correct channel automatically with that i can minimize my digital audio workstation and we're done on this side this should work when i get a midi input it should play the instrument that is over here so i minimize this and i leave it running in the background now we can move on to the server side and the 
Python client side. So first of all, let's make sure we have successfully installed the node. So I open up a terminal over here, open up a terminal and I simply type node and I can see that I have a prompt. So node is successfully installed. I exit with control C and I also make sure that I have NPM installed, which I do have installed. So no problem. Everything has been installed. Um, then I just go and get my server. So I, so not server, my template file. So I, I go to the, this repository and then I simply download or clone the repository. So I can download the zip file. And now that I have the zip file downloaded, I unzip it and I have it over here. And if I open this folder, I will find that there is my client and there is my server. So I would like actually to start from the client side. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to open up Tony and Tony is over here. And then I'm going to go on the desktop where I have basically this file. So it's the desktop. And inside of that I have a Pico main, Python client, main file. So this one is the file that you will modify if you want to use MicroPython. And what I'm doing right now here is I'm opening up simply a WART port. And then since I'm using the Blink Pico, I'm setting the display to be filled with zero. So the display is completely off. There is a function here called the play that is going to play for you a note at a certain speed for a certain duration on a specific MIDI channel. So this is play. And then down here, simply what I do is I have a loop that basically check if I press button A, B or C and then send out three different notes, note 60, 62 and 64. The first two on channel one and the last one on channel two. So that's it. I just make sure that I'm connected to the serial. So I'm connected to the serial and then I play. And once I do that, if I click any or the button, you will find that it's printing out MIDI and the information that I want to basically be printing. So it's nothing really special. I'm writing on the word MIDI followed by the channel, the note, the velocity and the duration. That's about it. So that's what we are sending out. I can also upload this file directly on the on the Pico so that I don't need to keep the serial port open, but that doesn't really matter. So I'm going to minimize this because we are connected and we are sending out values. So everything is good. Okay. So nothing else has to be done here. So I minimize this. Now we can go to the server. So for the server, I just want to open this server here in Visual Studio Code. You actually don't have to, but, but you just might be have to modify for one time one file. So I'm going to open up this in Visual Studio Code. Any editor is fine. And you can find it as soon as I open it up, I have uh, some code file that you don't have to care about. But there is this env file that contains some uh, variables that you might want to modify. So uh, one is the name of your MIDI interface. The name of the Yomidit interface should be this AAC driver bus one, unless you modify the name, right? We did it just before. If you modify the name of your interface, that has to re be rematched. Otherwise, this is the name. Then you have to find the serial port you have and the baud rate. Now the baud rate, you don't want to change it. And it's matching the one on the USB, uh, sorry, on the, on the MicroPython. This is the, your USB port. If you want to find your USB port, what you can do on the Mac, is simply do list dev tty star and then head. And basically I'm going to look at the first 10 and I see that there are two USB. Now I know that this one here, it's actually my Raspberry Pi Pico. And this one here, it's the cable, the USB TTL cable I purchased. So I am speaking uh, using USB, uh, uh, USB serial and this number here. I'm speaking from my USB to the, the word using this. And that's what I copy over here for the serial port. Once I have all of this done, what I want to make sure is to install my dependency by typing npm i, stand for install. That will install all the dependencies that I need for this code. And after that, npm start. And with that, it tells me I'm connecting to the driver bus one. And now if I click anything on my Raspberry Pi Pico, you can hear and also see 
the MIDI messages. And that's pretty much it. That's the conclusion of the tutorial. Now, the next time you, if you have this one saved up, I can actually exit by Control C. If all of this is set up, you don't have to open any more Visual Studio Code. What you can simply do is open up the, not the emoji, but the terminal. So I open up my terminal. And if I go to, uh, in my particular case, is uh, Andrea Desktop, uh, MIDI Pico. There we go, actually, it was over here. MIDI Pico, MIDI, oh, I think I, I got it the wrong one, uh, desktop, I don't think you find it by itself, MIDI Pico main, and then MIDI server JS. So I go to this folder here, and by the way, I could have simply done this way, CD and drag this in, okay? So once I get into this, I could have done NPM start, and my server would be starting over here. Now I can minimize this. And when I click the buttons, it's still working. It's still working. Okay? So that's all. Let's conclude the tutorial. I hope it was helpful. Otherwise, feel free to reach out. Good luck.